Hello guys, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Farad Ahmad. So this is another important video today. We are going to talk about acute confusion. So please keep in mind, in acute confusion, this topic can come in the same menstruation. So you have to rule out the main five or six causes of acute confusion. There could be a lot of causes, but you have to rule out all these causes while you are obtaining this same main case. So first of all, important thing, the patient will be elderly in most of the cases. And patient will present with acute disorientation acute confusion okay so what you have to do you have to rule out the causes first of all patient is elderly if patient is having the chest uh, infection patient is coughing productive cough presenting with the confusion and the fever this could be related to chest sepsis patient is elderly patient is coming with fever and the acute confusion it could be urine related sepsis patient is coming after the fall and acute confusion it could be you know traumatic or it could be internal bleed leading to the confusion and if patient is admitted receiving the iv fluid aggressive fluid replacement could lead to the confusion because of the electrolyte imbalance hyponatremia or if patient is on any long term drugs which we will discuss shortly and because of that drugs patient is losing too much sodium in the urine and because of that patient can go in the confusion as well so we will discuss all these things one by one in the same man case. Keep in mind the purpose of telling you people is you should rule out the DD's differential diagnosis of the confusion. I have very good news for you people. Being a PLAB2 candidate, definitely you will be applying or you will be in process of applying for your PLAB2 visitor visa. And if you are looking for any services, any consultancy, I have started a visa consultancy for PLAB2 visas, visitor visas, skilled worker visas, health and care worker visas, postgraduate visas or PSW. So you can contact us on the given email address in the description of the video. Definitely we will be there to help you people for your visa purposes. So after reading the scenario on the door, when you will enter the room, first of all, you have to introduce yourself with the examiner in a way. Hello examiner, my name is Faraz. I'm one of the doctors here in the department and my GMC number is 7808811111. Okay, so then you will proceed, you will approach the patient and before reaching the patient, you have to safety net in a way like you are a safe doctor. So how you will safety net yourself? you will say examiner as you might have taken all the universal precautions and then you will approach the patient so when you will approach the patient first of all you have to introduce yourself with the patient so you will introduce in a way hello dear my name is Ahmad I am one of the doctor in this department if there is no response from the patient definitely there will be someone with patient so you will ask the patient details and you will ask the patient date of birth and you will ask the relation with patient from the you know any of the attendant available our patient could be there with a nurse having the IV fluid ongoing with the IV cannula and so the nurse or the patient will confirm the name and the age or date of birth of the patient so after that what you have to do you have to keep in your mind so patient is coming with acute confusion so what will be the presentation patient may present with a dizziness vomiting drowsiness that is very very important headache there could be headache and acute cognitive deficit or acute confusion seizures comma these are very very important things which you have to keep in your mind so when you will start taking the history either from the patient either from the relative or either from the nurse present on the scene you have to ask about these symptoms when did it start when did confusion started how did it start does it started uh, abruptly or it started gradually and then you will ask about the, any associated symptoms you have to ask about the cough you have to ask about the fever to rule out the pneumonia as cause of the confusion you have to ask about the urinary symptoms to rule out the uti as a cause of the confusion in elderly then you have to ask about the any fall any trauma any head injury to rule out the traumatic cause to rule out the intracranial bleed as a cause of the confusion in that case and after asking all these questions you have to ask about any medical conditions so that is very very important they may report about you know diabetes hypertension or depression or then you have to ask about the medication so in the medication use of diuretics ACE inhibitors 
inhibitors, antidepressant drugs. That is very, very important. These three drugs can cause the electrolyte imbalance and hyponatremia, and that can lead to the acute confusion as well. Then you will ask about the smoker's cuff. Okay, so then you will say, Now I am going to assess the patient. It will include look, feel, tap, and listen to the different parts of the body. Please be assured a member of medical team is with me and he is acting as a chaperone and we will maintain the privacy of the patient okay this is a semen case patient will be attached to monitor you have to acknowledge that you will look at monitor and you will say i can see my patient is attached to the monitor and then you will do a quick comment on the vital and start a to e approach so in a in airway you will say i am looking for any lip swelling tongue swelling and foreign body and then you will comment on the finding then you will look at the oxygen saturation please Please keep in mind if oxygen saturation is low you will give 100% oxygen via non rebreather mask if oxygen saturation is normal you will uh, you know directly move to the B so please keep in mind if acute confusion acute cognitive deficit is because of the chest sepsis because of pneumonia oxygen saturation will be low so if oxygen saturation is normal there is no cough there is no fever then chest cause of the confusion is ruled out so in the B, in breathing, you will unbutton patient shirt to see his chest, look, feel, feel the trachea position and tap and listen to the chest. So you will comment on the respiratory rate and then you will auscultate the chest. You will comment it's clear. So if chest is clear, oxygen is normal, there is no cough and fever, pneumonia, chest sepsis is ruled out. And then you will request for the chest x-ray, ECG and ABG immediately on spot. Then you will move to C, you will move to circulation, you will pinch the finger to check the capillary field time, you will take pulse and blood pressure and you have to comment on that. And then you have to insert la two large boravi cannulas and you have to take blood. So you have to verbalize, examiner, I am going to insert two large boravi cannulas and I am going to take the blood for the investigation, including full blood count including urea and electrolytes and creatinine clotting screening serum lactate lfts and the kidney function test so the game is going to start here when you will say i am going to take the bloods to do the investigations at any point the examiner can give you the values of the blood results so any point examiner is going to give you the value of the blood results your management will change your next step will change let's suppose examiner has given you nothing examiner has not given you the reading of the blood so then you will move to D. So you will check the blood sugar of the patient. You will check the pupils of the patient and you will comment on that. So why you are assessing the pupil? Because if the confusion is related to intracranial bleed, definitely there will be findings in the pupil. If confusion is related to any withdrawal symptoms, there will be findings in the pupils. And then you have to ask for the temperature measurement as well. So after that, you will move to E exposure. So you will say examiner or you will say Adam, I am going to expose your tummy and check the abdomen quickly check the private areas and you have to insert a catheter or to monitor the urine output and you have to take the urine for the urine dip and the culture and sensitivity that is very very important don't forget to insert the catheter and take the urine for the urine dip and culture and sensitivity in a acute confusion semen case at any point from c to e examiner can give you the values of the blood results and once examiner is going to give you the values of the blood results you have to modify your management accordingly so let's suppose examiner has given you nothing nothing blood results so what you have to do you will say based on the presentation as patient is confused i would like to add few more investigation to rule out the cause of this acute confusion that includes ct scan of the head serum osmolality urine osmolality so if at this point examiner is going to give you the blood results and in the blood results sodium levels are low then you have to explain so i think this confusion is because of the low levels of the sodium so to correct the sodium levels what i am going to do is i will admit the patient i will involve the senior and we will involve the specialist doctor as well we would like to add further investigations including serum cortisol level and what you have to do you have to comment on the management step if patient sodium level is low because of the drugs then you have to start the patient on iv fluid after discussion with endocrinologist and that fluid will be hypertonic saline in some cases please keep in mind don't correct sodium too abruptly don't correct more than 6 to 12 milli equivalent per liter in 24 hours but if patient sodium levels are low because of the overhydration then you have to restrict the fluids 
please keep in mind you will comment during this admission in the ward we will review your medications as well which may be the cause of your low levels of sodium and then you will safety net the patient so that's all guys related to acute confusion case if you have any question you can comment on the video you can message me on the instagram i would like to reply everyone's comment and the messages so if you need any help any services any guidance consultancy related to your plab to visa related to your visitor visa of the uk you can directly comment on the video or you can email us on the given email address in the description of video thank you very much for watching